Hi, I'm Maddie McGuigan. I'm 15 years old, and I'm a part of the 83% of adolescent girls who read fashion magazines. Sadly, I'm also a part of the 98% of women who feel an immense pressure from an external source to look a certain way. Now, why is this? Why do the majority of women feel this pressure, or why do 92% of women want to change something about their bodies? Well, the fashion industry is partially blamed for this epidemic. While you may not be a part of the 83% of women who read fashion magazines, you have undoubtedly heard of Kendall Jenner, Gigi Hadid, Carly Claus, or Cara Delevingne, all of which have upwards of 4.3 million followers on Instagram. These women, being models, embody the fashion industry's idea of beauty. But what exactly is this idea? Well, picture this. The average American woman is 5 foot 4 inches tall and weighs 166 pounds, while the average model is 5 foot 10 inches tall and weighs only 107 pounds. These models typically weigh 23% less than the average women of their height. While a key factor in determining anorexia nervosa in a patient is when they are at least 15% underweight. So, in essence, the fashion industry is promoting anorexic or unhealthy body types. This is not only mentally draining on the recipients of these ideas, it is also physically torturous. Anorexia has the highest rate among mental illnesses of death, and each patient, depending on the severity of their case, has a 5-20% to chance of dying because of anorexia. So why does the fashion industry endorse these extremely unhealthy body types on women? Well, that hasn't always been the case. In the 1950s, Marilyn Monroe and Grace Kelly had the ultimate bodies. Not only did they have a glowing complexion, but the quintessential hourglass figure. In the 50s, women were encouraged to be curvy rather than thin. Then, in the 1960s, a young model named Twiggy took over the industry. She, along with Jean Shrimpton, had a slim, almost boyish figure. Twiggy, at just 16 years old, only weighed 91 pounds. The trend of thinness continued through the 70s and 80s. However, there seemed to be a greater emphasis on height and being fit rather than thin. Models such as Christy Brinkley, Cindy Crawford, and Claudia Schiffer embodied this ideal. While some models in the 1990s continued the athletic trend, such as Naomi Campbell and Christy Turlington, a new ideal was developed. Heroin chic was the new trend. These models were increasingly thin and even bony. Kate Moss, the embodiment of this new trend, famously said, nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. These crazy trends caused modern-day models to lead some seriously unhealthy lives. The eating disorder problem became so bad that Spain had to impose a minimum BMI, or body mass index, for its models. Despite these regulations and knowledge of how dangerous eating disorders are, models are still pushed to be as thin as possible. Karl Lagerfeld, the head designer and creative director at Chanel and Fendi, said, No one wants to see around women. But it's not, not all bad. Recently, Sports Illustrated published its first-ever swimsuit issue to feature a plus-size model on the cover. Along with model Ashley Graham, MMA fighter Ronda Rousey graced the cover, and she is also very curvy and athletic. It is undeniable that the fashion industry has made some serious leaps and bounds in expanding the body types present in their editorials. However, there is still a common thread throughout the models that are popular during their age. They are all, or mostly, white. This is ridiculous, considering that in the 2014 fall and winter fashion shows in New York, 79% of the models were white, only 10% were black, 7% were Asian, and 3% were Latina. This is ridiculous for this day and age. When I was younger, I was always extremely self-conscious about being so much taller than all of the girls in my grade, especially since I was the first to shop in the adult section of a store, like a J. Crew rather than Crew Cuts. Rather than making women feel bad about how they look, the fashion industry should be celebrating women's individuality, no matter what size, shape, race, or ethnicity they are.